I'm Dr. Jessie Menzel. Um, I am the director of our pediatric clinic here at the UCSD Eating Disorders Program. So disgust looks like this. Disgust is one of our core emotions. So right alongside fear or anger or happiness, disgust is one of the six or seven basic emotions that are kind of hardwired into us. Disgust is a pretty universal emotion. People experience it pretty similarly across cultures, and you can even identify the facial, the hallmark, the hallmark facial features of disgust as early as infancy. Well, in the pediatric program, we noticed that that process didn't happen quite as nicely as we would have liked to have seen. Um, that even with repeated exposure, um, very gentle exposure to these new foods, these kids weren't really warming up to them and they weren't really adopting them into their diet. What we saw instead was that as these kids tried these foods more and more, they actually seemed to like it less and less. Um, and they were less open to trying new foods. We observed lots of behaviors like gags or grimaces and so something just told us there was something really aversive going on when they were trying these new foods. Disgust is one of many emotions that you might see in the context of eating disorders although in most traditional eating disorders we're usually targeting the emotion of anxiety. We see a lot of anxiety or fear um, when it comes to eating in patients with anorexia nervosa for example. Disgust is very related to anxiety but also very different. So they're related because both disgust and fear have to do with protecting or protection or defense. So anxiety is an emotion that's there to keep us safe. Disgust is also an emotion that's there to keep us safe. But disgust is meant to keep us safe at a much more physiological level. These sort of response profiles for disgust and anxiety look a little bit different. So there are different like um, parts of the brain that get activated when we feel disgust versus anxiety. There are slightly different facial features that go along with disgust versus anxiety. Um, different neurological profiles that get activated with disgust versus anxiety. Um, so there are two distinct emotions. And what really got us interested in this question of like disgust and anxiety is that they respond very differently to treatment. When you're afraid of something, we might treat that using um, an intervention called exposure. So we take the thing that you're afraid of, we have you face it over and over and over again until your anxiety or your fear response goes away. When we do that same treatment for disgust, Previous research has shown that disgust responses don't go away over time with repeated exposures. So this is another feature that helps to kind of distinguish and differentiate those two emotions. What do we do now that we think disgust may be playing a role in selective eating that's not just anxiety? Disgust really kind of, kind of throws a wrench in things. So the first question we need to answer is, well, is disgust actually what's going on here in these selective eaters? Is disgust actually playing a role? We need to do more careful study on the association between the experience of disgust and having selective eating. The next then big, really big question once we figure out if disgust is actually playing a role is how do we treat it? So while we have really great treatments for anxiety um, and we have a lot of other um, well-tested um, treatments for other eating disorders like anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa, we don't have a lot of really great treatments for disgust. They're looking into this question right now in the anxiety disorder world because there are some anxiety disorders where disgust plays a role, um, but we definitely need to consider disgust much more carefully as we craft our treatments for select feeders. <laughs>